So Illuminati is a creator who is constantly stained in scandal and it seems to be getting much worse for her. As despite the amount of times that she drags herself through the mud, she can never admit that she's wrong. And the latest update on her lawsuit just muddies the waters even more because she's responded and it's bad. I'm going to show you these updates and a lot more because it seems that Blair is just disintegrating right in front of our very eyes. As despite the Illuminati name, this is no conspiracy to cancel her. This is all her own doing. So hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. I'm Jake Baz and today we're going to be talking about something nice and cheery. It's at least a wonderful story of how karma can come from the heavens above and bite you in the backside. Illuminati or Blair is someone who's been in the commentary scene for quite a while and they were very, very well respected up until the point that they started to crack. And this entire cracking has just fully opened up and now it's led to a scene where Blair is suing other creators for libel for the sake of it, it seems. And we're going to cover the latest updates with this and also give you a little recap of like what's gone on in this entire situation because it is ridiculous, but it all started because of this. Just under a year ago, Illuminati posted a tweet where she was talking about someone ripping content from her videos and reusing it. And it turned out to be entirely fake in that it was not that scenario whatsoever. And it seems this slightly incel response of her interesting, seems to have blown up in her face, leading her to where she is today. With a 90% drop off in her views, totally wiping out the channel practically, making it less relevant than me, and that is something. And her content has just entirely dissipated into darkness and become even worse than what it was before. And a perfect example for how far her content has actually come is in this video, the dark side of disaster relief. Because if you thought she was plagiarizing videos before and just being lazy, well, this is another level of lazy. So we get 17 minutes into the video and there is a six minute clip here where she doesn't talk at all. They haven't added the voiceover. It's the most pointless thing ever. No one even cross-checked it. No one watched the 20 minute video to see if it had gone up. So it's clear now that she's got to the point of just not even watching her videos back, just throwing them out there because there's no point because we're not making enough money. And because of this lack of money, it seems that she's trying to take it out on everyone else because she managed to actually provide a lawsuit a couple of months ago to some notable creators. These are Wonderstruck, Oz Media, and Felix the Kit Kat, who have all gone on their public platforms and said the kind of person that Blair was to them and also their experiences with her. And she's taken this as a commentary YouTuber who provides criticism to other people, thought about it a second and thought, eh? That doesn't make sense. They can't be doing that to me, so that she's gone and sued them. And this lawsuit is very thin in its contents. There's a lot of stuff that's missing out. There's not very much specifics around the entire situation. And because of that, there's been quite a few back and forth of it. Where we got to the current point we're at now, where we're finding that Illuminati has brought in this last ditch attempt to get everything pushed forward before all of the evidence is submitted for the case. So we're gonna go through that now. And I will note that some of the stuff in here you'll find very personal also very interesting, which uh, it's going to work out well in court, isn't it? No, it's not. No, no, it's not. All of these documents have been brought forward by Madcatster, so I would like to give a big shout out to him. Thank you for getting these things over and also highlighting the problems here. Go check out his channel. He covers law. It's brilliant. And also, if you enjoy, please hit the like button and sub. I'd love to see you back. So from this initial lawsuit from Blair, there was a motion to dismiss which was handled by Oz Media, which was just basically, this is ridiculous. And then there's been a couple of revisions on Blair's part. And we're going to go through both the second to last and the last submission that's currently gone through. Because this has the big amount of the problems and the troubles that are going on in this entire document. So it's best to start with this one here. So the lawsuit was filed and it had a lot of problems in it because it was not specific enough. So Oz Media filed a motion to dismiss on this and essentially it highlights all the problems that are going on in the actual document and it quite obviously points out the flaws very well and it really does highlight uh, Illuminati's sort of hodgepodge sort of you know last minute dot com sort of vibe that she's going for with this and here you can see plaintiff in being Blair has failed to articulate the alleged defamatory statements made precluding any findings such as statements that are provably false or defamatory and by saying this that the plaintiff's entire amended complaint should be dismissed for failure to state claim upon which relief may be granted. That in a nutshell is essentially saying that this that is filed by us towards Blair because of the lawsuit 
they're saying this is ridiculous. There's no like specific notes to like uh, the majority of the accusations that are being thrown at them. So Blair's just sort of thrown stuff at a wall and hope that they stuck without thinking of the consequences of maybe, oh, I might actually need receipts for the stuff that I'm doing. Which as I showed you, the fact that she can't even proofread a 20 minute video kind of takes you down the wrong alleyway, doesn't it? It shows the person that she can be. One of the big things throughout all this can be seen in this one where they're saying it's a hodgepodge of jumbled facts relating to personal business relationships with defendants. Many of the alleged facts in the amendment's complaint clear to be irrelevant to the defamation and breach of contract claims, which definitely can be seen dotted throughout this entire document, which is essentially saying that there is literally nothing wrong. And Blair, as you can see here, is using multiple sort of examples which are relayed out by us in the way that Blair has said that stuff has happened to her. This is a problem. And this is worth suing for. And it scares me, America, because I cannot explain how much I do not want to be like that. Never make my romantic relationship breakup be a court case. And some of the weirder things in here, such as in 2023, saying that an employee had been texted that uh, Blair had cheated on us. And that leads us to be like messaging someone saying, oh, they've screwed me over. And I don't know about you, but I think the idea of something like that being in a document where I am being sued how, how does that have any sort of semblance to what's going on at all? I think it's a pretty normal thing that if you've been cheated on, you probably feel like you've been screwed over somewhat. Whether it's true or untrue, messaging one person about that or two people about that, it doesn't have any semblance to be like, oh, I'm going to sue you 20 grand for it. Like, to me, that makes no fun sense and it doesn't towards either because as you can see none of the alleged statements are plausibly defamatory and then also highlighting that none of this actually relates to pyramid entertainment llc which is the company that blair owns around the whole illuminati you know sort of jazz and it's a good point because on top of everything else this isn't directly to blair this is to the actual company of blair so what does her personal matters have anything to do with the business matters at hand? This whole like lawsuit is intended to be grabbing back some of the money that she's lost from losing her entire fan base because of the amount of problems that she's had. And it really does feel like this, in my opinion, is somewhat trying to claw back some of that damage because of the fact of that. And maybe she thinks that like Oz Media, Wonderstroke, Felix the Cat, they could be easy targets, but uh, it doesn't make sense at all especially when there's so many like vague claims dotted in between but uh, i'm not a lawyer i just hope the one that she has is not being paid much because it's a little bit terrible and us media seems to latch onto this half-assed nature because their lawyers have put out plaintiffs have already amended their complaint and should not be granted further leave to amend where because remember blair has done this lawsuit and it's already been revised because there wasn't enough information in it that was specific enough they have and continue to fail to plead plausible claims based on facts rather than threadbare legal conclusions, asking for the full thing to be dismissed. So from looking at the initial lawsuit, it does seem that there is a lot of holes in it and I kind of do agree with them, but then uh, Blair obviously is going to try and rinse every single drop out of this possible. So I'm going to show you her response to this and then also the amended complaint that came through, which is the newest information in this whole saga. So yeah, she's not just going to stand up and just let it happen, is she? She has to bite back so she's come back with this response here clapping back at the idea that oh there was just this random text out there saying that i got cheated on on or about january 4th 2023 defendant contacted blair's employee and told them that he'd been cheated on despite defendant's romantic relationship ending in 2021 and well i'm not sure about that one uh, i haven't been looking at their bedroom and i don't think i want to there is then reference to one of oz media's posts about uh, blair abusing leading illuminati to their then have uh, certain threats posted on Twitter, Discord, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and email, kind of what happens. Then stating that she had to make a call to the police around this regard in April 2023, but she doesn't actually specify anything to do with it. Why did you call the police? I I, I know you're saying around that, and you're saying first call. Why were they, w was the only one? Why have you put first? You're just ignoring so much around it. There's no context to any of it, really. It's just that, oh, I had these threats on social media, and then I called the police, which really Respectfully, of course, what are the police going to do about Bilbo bagging 69 calling you a c***? But these are the bits that get me. Blair's talking about in this bit about a video being posted, the biggest bully, 
uh, which was about her and about the troubles that she's causing. And that the defendants speak publicly about their intent to publish another defamatory video about her and Pyramid. Which to me, from someone who is a commentary YouTuber and has many other friends that are also commentary YouTubers, and, and you are one yourself, bear in mind, bear, bear that in mind, Blair. Criticism is like the cornerstone of anything that someone does. So, I mean, you could look at every single video that you've done in the past, Blair, and you could consider them defamatory to the people and organizations that you do them on. I just find it insane that she thinks that she's at this moral high ground where she can go and attack someone else for defamatory comments in a video, but then every single thing that she does is something like that as well. The entire point of a commentary YouTuber is you voice your opinions. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're quite bad. But you're voicing your opinion and some of the stuff you might say might not be nice to hear, but you don't sue them for it. And I don't think you've been sued by anyone who you've done videos on. It's just insane to me. Like, you based your entire channel around criticising someone else, but then you can't take it back. And then also we're saying, oh, oh they intended to post another defamatory video. Oh, shiver me timbers. From the sounds of that, they didn't post another one. So how is that going to be causing a lot of problems in your life? How How is that even defamatory in itself? The, the option that they might do it. Personally, I think she's lost a few of her marbles with this one. Then using a couple more examples, which I, I just... Once again, you're a YouTuber, you voice your own opinions, so why can't someone else voice them on you? And I think actually the reason why that might not be the case is because as we've seen with all of these videos coming out recently about her, that she copies everyone else. I'll link a couple in the description because it shows the kind of person that she is. She is just a copycat. She literally reads stuff off Wiki. So maybe it's the fact that her opinion isn't based on her own opinion. It's based based on someone else's on Wikipedia. So the idea anyone else is questioning it is just crazy to her. And it is really seen here that she is trying to pin all of the problems that have gone on with her channel with this and not the fact that she put a tweet out that was about irony as it exposed her to being totally a fraud. The allegations referenced above pleaded in the amended complaint falsely alleged that plaintiff committed a criminal offence and sexual misconduct. These false allegations have severely impacted plaintiff's reputation on YouTube. Blair was a well-respected documentarian. A reputation which is waning if not all destroyed due to the defendant's actions. Which is actually insane that she is blaming everything on this. Sure there might have been a contrary contributing factor to the downfall of how she is perceived, but there was very much a lot more going on before any of these came out. If she could climb out her own arsehole, she could probably see that's the fact, but she won't. It's really, really plucking at straws, isn't it? She will be able to establish at trial that she has lost thousands of followers to her YouTube channels due to the defendant's actions, which have caused a losses of substantial revenue. Well, I mean, you were kind of waning before and then you posted a tweet about someone copying you that turned out to be entirely false and now you're in this situation. But also the fact that she's trying to claim that losing thousands of followers equals a loss in substantial revenues. I'm not sure that's how YouTube works. I don't think you get money for how many subs you've got. That's basically the summary of what's gone on here in this initial part, with the court concluding that we're not going to dismiss this. We'll give her another 14 days. And oh, that's nice of him. I mean, she's already revised it once, twice, so I, I don't know. I, I don't really know what's going on here. Why, why, is it, why are they giving her so much leniency? But fair enough. Which then led Illuminati to think, all right, well, I'm really in the mud here, so I'm going to submit this a week later. And that's where we're currently at with the newest documents and the reason why I'm bringing you this video because it's got spicier as she's amended it. But still, obviously, it's full of problems and non-specific stuff and just a lot of insane statements which she really shouldn't be putting in a lawsuit for money. Especially when it's related to personal relationships and not actually the pyramid scheme that's got going on. Sorry, not pyramid scheme. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> Leading Blair to this final document, the Rosetta Stone of how to do a lawsuit after three revisions. Adding a couple more facts to the allegations. I'll show you some of the interesting bits here. We're definitely not a law channel. Highlighting some of the accounts of what people use. Leading initially with the romantic relationship, which uh, then led to a load of bills being paid by Illuminati. So as his home didn't get taken away from underneath him because uh 
the fact that Illuminati wasn't really paying him very well. What a loving relationship we've got here. Claiming that she'd just undergone surgery and was actively taking narcotic painkillers, therefore her memory was limited during this time. With him caring for her during this, with him stating if he doesn't get a loan for six months, the bank were going to foreclose on his home. And apparently this is coercion because she did help him and then uh, once she regained her consciousness from not taking the medication, she realised, oh, I've done this, I, I, I feel like I need to. And this weird one here that uh, he stopped caring for Blair and was almost hospitalised because of it. Lack of care. I think the lack of care really is just in this entire sort of thread. Because I don't know what him looking after her by choice when he stops doing that. What? How? How is this included? What? What? What relevance? What does this have to do with actually, like, you know, getting money? She's she's a grown woman. She can look after herself. On or about the mid-end August 2022, Blair confronted the defendant, who eventually agreed to payment plan to repay her mortgage payments. He was wrongfully coerced from her over a period of approximately two years. However, defendant later altered the repayment to 10. So at this time, she's saying that she does have full understanding, like, she's not taking this medication anymore, which, uh, I'll I'll borrow some of them but uh, she's not taking them now and that is why she's able to do this and sign a contract but you know having to like you know sign a contract that is legally binding to this 10-year plan uh, this requires two people to sign it both people who are involved you know so how can she not know that the repayment plan was changed to 10 years unless she looked at the contract and signed it doesn't sound like coercion there that sounds like you just being a bit of a fuck idiot Blair or what lie and then even with the cheating stuff uh, this ends up going weird as well over the Christmas and New Year's holidays uh, Blair started seeing a new person romantically and she moved into a new home with all her belongings still in his house and during this interim period defendant accessed Blair's computer without permission and read her personal messages in doing so he learned that Blair was romantically involved with someone else but he must have had passwords to go on your stuff uh, I mean I, if, if he got that by other means by being a bit snoopy that is just a bit weird but i mean i've heard about it happen loads of times and he had passwords why would he have passwords because you gave it to him if you don't want that kind of action maybe don't give out passwords and i feel like the interim period uh that <laughs> the loan deal that went on i think that they're saying there they're trying to obfuscate the truth a little bit i feel like she started seeing this guy in between that period, you know, but like during while they were still together, but kind of not, which is cheating. But obviously, Blair wouldn't do that because her morality is too high for anyone else to comprehend. That's why a commentary YouTuber is suing someone for saying something they don't like. Very moral, very moral. You, you're you good, Blair, you're good. Then highlighting the cheating stuff, and I, once again, don't have a clue how this is defamation. This has nothing to do with her channel or her business. This is all personal stuff that they're just airing out to the public. I don't have one clue what they're trying to achieve by this at all, at all. And in my opinion, I don't see how this could bear in court whatsoever. We then follow on with more relationship stuff because I mean, we haven't had enough yet, have we? Talking about the unfortunate mental position with a wellness check, which then meant that uh, Blair decided to not go near him for the foreseeable. And then approximately one month after the defendant's father sent a demand letter seeking personal belongings back from the vehicle which is where Blair repossessed the vehicle uh, and, I mean, they wanted the stuff in the car. Who'd have guessed? While unpacking the vehicle, she found intent of the defendant's intent to permanently relocate to Texas, despite his assertions he would be moving to Colorado and working with Pyramid and her. What does this have to do with anything that they're saying? I don't know. Why does it matter where he goes? It, <laughs> what what point are you proving here? What are you trying to uh, opinionate? Anything? I don't get it. And then from that time, the defendant was virtually silent until they contacted someone and discussed to create a plan to obtain revenge on Blair for this incident. Then going on around, there's been threads about this and false claims such as unlawfully repossessing a rental car and that Blair was stealing money from employees in the form of wage theft and more which from the stuff i've seen it seems kind of like that but uh 
These are just allegations. I, I'm not saying anything. I don't want to get sued. Then talking about an NDA they had and that uh, he breached this by showing some stuff around the organization, which, I mean, generally could be true, but I'm not exactly sure. This is the problem. She's not stating what exactly he's done. All she's doing is highlighting the issues that could potentially be in breach without actually showing any sort of substance to it. So I feel like something like this will just get thrown out. Once again, as well, with the... The uh, defendant has further established his intent to post additional content which will harm plaintiffs in a devastating manner. I think you've done that to yourself, really, Illuminati. This is kind of what you've already done and gone through with all of these problems that you've created, and maybe with this lawsuit as well. But then also, I, I, oh, I'm going to do something in the future. Well, how can you... How can you actually do that? How could you say that that's a legal breach because of the fact that they're potentially going to do something in the future? Surely you airing this out is only going to do something like that anyway in a public sort of setting. I, I just find the way that she's trying to dance around this ridiculous. And then she's got loss of revenue, future loss of revenue, pain and suffering, and attorney fees because of this pain and suffering. It's like me going through this. Then going on to say that Blair was in this Let's Talk video by Oz Media uh, mentioned that potentially she has been involved in embezzlement. Describing this as untrue and then saying, well, this is defamation per se. Well, uh, are you going to provide any evidence as to why this is untrue? There's no timestamps, there's no screenshots, there's no sort of proof from her side. It's just sort of explaining the point and then saying, well, th this isn't right. This is a legal court document, okay? But bear that in mind. In the same Let's Talk video referenced in paragraph 46 of this complaint, Oz also stated that Blair had bad credit, so all of the purchases, loans, everything was being placed in my name. This would lead me to asking my partner for financial help. Financial help for things such as my home. I even offered to work for her on a crypto farm for free to pay back the debt. By saying then that these statements, according to Blair's and Blair's lawyers, were defamatory. Uh, so, okay, definitely not. Well, um, what's going on with that other lawsuit that's going on? Because I don't know if you have remembered or seen this, but she has actually been sued by the state that she's living in because she's not paying her taxes. So, um, I mean, th this really does seem like a cut and closed case, you know. I think we could say that you've probably got a bit of bad credit. Maybe stop invested in the crypto farms and as you can see here it's only three grand that they're trying to get back three thousand dollars which in retrospect to how much money that she was making before all of these problems uh is quite embarrassing <laughs> so the idea that she's chasing for things like this three hundred thousand pound for um lack of funds for a brand new blank uh, i don't i don't know it seems that maybe she's trying to crawl back some of that money you know then about all the financial mishaps with oz uh, she's saying that this is called caused a lot of problems such as financial coercion and causing some form of indentured servitude, which essentially means working for free. And going on to state that Blair needs uh, some special damages because the videos have dropped 95% in revenue, going from 47,000 over to two grand during the same period after this video was dropped on her. I can assure her that this is not the only reason why she's been wiped off the internet, so to say. It's definitely not true just this video. But obviously she's got to try and say that and try and bring that to the fore because then that would make it a, an actual like suable offense. Really, it could be the 1,000 other videos around your content that could be the problem, but who am I to judge? And then in this response video from Wonderstruck, uh, they said that they had calculated 37,000 instead of the annual 50K salary. Because after tax and deductions, it turns out to be 37,920, but they don't say what deductions, what tax. They haven't actually worked it out. It's not very good when we're once again in court looking at this stuff, but also this doesn't really seem this is like one tiny thing in like a load of other statements so i don't even know how you manage to quantify the damage that this has caused because really i don't think many people were looking at the fact that they've been paid 12 grand under then there's another situation about blair having a car repossessed which uh, she really shouldn't have done and uh, they were like this is a massive Fuck you, basically, by driving it out of the state. Uh, and apparently this is defamatory. Um, 
Okay. Once again, stating facts that revenue dropped once again, which, I mean, you keep winning. <laughs> you keep winning, Blair, so keep it up. And it really does, again, once highlight this, the, the fact that the state are suing her for two grand and there's a lot of problems that are going on here. And she's just trying to pick out certain bits and then say, oh, I lost that amount of money there because of that one thing, when it was actually a total internet pylon because of the way that you acted. We didn't put out that tweet. We didn't start this massive little roll down the hill, did we? But in my opinion, she seems to just be really far up her own ass. Then there's another bit about Felix the Kit Kat, which I can't even be asked going through because it's same again. They did something relatively small in the scope of everything. And then because of this, her revenue dropped from 74 grand to two grand. So maybe I'm wrong then. It's not just one thing that happened. It's three things that happened that caused her to lose 95% of her income. And it's so funny that maybe if she did just not do that tweet about someone ripping her off for then to her to be exposed as ripping off every single other YouTuber a wicket and everything under the sun that this would have never happened where she's resorting to a pathetic lawsuit in my opinion potentially to just try pay off her debt so I don't know I I don't really see any other motive around this like we said she's probably not in a very good financial position at the moment so that that must be it and then quite a base moment there's a discord screenshot in a legal court document which once again but what, what are we doing here? But there, there's, <laughs> it's there. And in that is a clip of uh, Illuminati saying the arsler. And this carries defamatory meaning, according to Blair, because this implies that she's both a hypocrite and a bigger. And I don't think she's like that at all. Have we seen anything around that? I don't think so. I think she's perfectly morally balanced. Then there's a section around Wonderstroke having the computer password. Once again, we're bringing it back up. Blair didn't share the password, otherwise granting permission to access her computer, much less her private conversations. Vendor didn't know they had authorization to do it, but they did it anyway. And because he essentially did the thing of snooping on someone's phone, found out that she's cheating. And yeah, there's something here that, or oh, potentially they have done something to obtain evidence and bring out the, all this to the fore because of something that potentially couldn't even be the case, maybe. Maybe they did break up in December 2021. But at the same time, what does this have to do with Pyramid Entertainment, Blair's actual company? This has nothing to do with it. This is a personal relationship matter which holds no bearings to the actual situation at hand. And it's not really like defamatory or deflection to try and push this on anyone else. This is just like something that goes on. If you, if you get cheated on, you tell your mates and th then they found out and they're like, oh, sh what, what an arsehole. But apparently, according to Blair, uh, learning on this information on the protected computer caused Wonderstruck to plot a way to exact revenge against Blair, including publishing defamatory content. Fair enough. And you can kind of tell that they are struggling for defamatory content. That there hasn't actually been that much of the video that's been obsessed around to be for this case. It's just like a couple of points here, a couple of points there, you know. And there we have it. That's what we've got so far. It's a little bit hard to talk about this because, I mean, it is is something that is public but also private it it feels a little bit bad to do a little bit naughty but i mean blair's been a little bit naughty in how she's been ripping off people to make millions of dollars over the course of years so i think we can rub it in just a tiny bit next what's going on with this is there's going to be a discovery phase which is essentially where they just look at all the stuff that can be brought to court and then eventually we probably will see a court case actually go down and i do really wonder how how that is going to end up because from what i'm seeing here in comparison to what i've also seen with like previously with sniper wolf and her boyfriend having a bit of a fallout in the legal courts as well they both might actually have the same lawyers because it, <laughs> it is really it's not very good there's so much stuff here which is just not specific it's not properly looked at or looked through it doesn't seem to point out certain flaws in arguments or issues and i really think that once like all of the stuff comes to the fore everything's brought together i i don't think it's gonna look good for blair but i mean it's not looking rosy at the moment is it not only is she allegedly being caught for being a liar a cheater someone who rips videos someone who rips entire sentences such as wiki introductions and then uses them as their own as a script and essentially just being brought up to be a fraud but she's also gonna lose a little bit of a dignity if this ever goes to court i mean she was a commentary channel which are very opinionated pieces on 
different things. But not only just different things, different people, different backgrounds, different issues. And I mean, I find it very, very hilarious that she is going to try and go for money because she's broke. She's going to go for money for this and she's going to try and get every single morsel she can. And the only reason why, probably, in my opinion, 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 don't sue me, is because she's lost 95% of her viewers, 95% of the actual money. She isn't cross-checking videos anymore. She probably edits herself. And it really does feel like the end uh, for her channel. And I think she's just trying to crawl back the few little crumbs that she has left, you know. I don't expect her to return to social media until this is done, really. And I don't really expect her as well to be uploading much more, considering the fact that, like I showed at the start, she just had a five-minute section where she didn't say anything and didn't even watch the video back first, which I think is absolutely amazing. But she's at that point at YouTube where, like, you're really sort of done. You, you're just done. So she's probably got a hat, she's left it on the hook, and she's walked out the door. She might actually be, like, the XQC of commentary channels, and I think that's brilliant but what do you think please do tell me in the comments i'd love to know what you thought i'll keep you updated on this if you enjoyed please hit the like and sub and i'll see you later i'm jet baz take care